welcome to Craft, Design, Edit, Sleep, Repeat. I'm your host, Lisa Conway. Welcome to my world where we try to understand the business of knit and crochet design. Welcome to episode 23. Today, I want to share with you the plans for this coming year and a bit more about tech editors and what we do. So obviously, there's a big change to this year's podcast, a slight name change, going from knit design to craft design, because we realized as we went along last year that we'd completely overlooked the crochet designers among us, and I really wanted to be inclusive. You can also tell that I'm sitting here by myself. Both Denise and Tiffany have had to step away from the podcast for various reasons. This makes me very sad. I'm very sorry to see both of them go. And I'm really hoping that as they move forward, that things settle down for both of them, because believe me, I know how hard it is. If it hadn't been for them keeping me going last year, keeping this podcast going, and me personally, I don't know what I would have done. They've been great friends to me, and I just, I wish them the very best for the future. We will still be doing our informational episode each month, but unfortunately it'll just be me, and I hope I'm not too boring. I'll try really hard. We also will still be doing an interview each month. My goal this year is to interview more designers, both knit and crochet, possibly some other tech editors, and maybe some indie dyers and yarn manufacturers or yarn store owners who might be willing to talk about their relationships with designers. And on that note, I'd just like to say, if you are a designer, knit, crochet, or otherwise, if you are an indie dyer, if you are a store owner that might be interested in participating in the podcast, please reach out either through the Facebook or Ravelry groups, or much better even would be the email, which will remain knitdesignedit at gmail.com. Okay, so let's move on and let's talk a little about what tech editors do, how they learn to be tech editors, that sort of thing. So first of all, let's look at what we do. Obviously, we edit patterns, but are you aware that we edit more than patterns? We edit articles. Now, usually that's if you work for a magazine, which I don't at the moment. We edit class handouts. If you are a teacher as well as a designer and you prepare class handouts, I'm happy to take a look at those and help make sure that they're just as clean and clear and concise, that your photos match up with your instructions if that's necessary. If you need to make sure that you haven't used abbreviations, that you haven't explained, those kinds of things. I'm happy to take a look at those. It's like editing any pattern. Uh, we do the same sort of thing. We look at the grammar. We look at the punctuation. We look to make sure that any numbers you use are correct. All of those things. But as a teacher... You will walk into your classroom knowing that the handout that you give your students will be just as clear as the instructions you give when you're standing in front of the class. We also edit books. Now, more and more designers are publishing their own books instead of going through a main house publisher and that means they're handling a lot of the process themselves. And just like with any pattern or other 
type of writing, it takes more than one pair of eyes. It takes someone who is looking at the nitty gritty detail of grammar and punctuation, all the things we've talked about time and time again. And we can also see, is the layout working? Does it look readable? You know, our eyes are they tracking? Are the photos in the right places? All that kind of thing. And is it conveying the information the way you want it to? Many editors offer more than one service. I myself do editing, grading, and schematics. Other editors I know also edit for accessibility formatting. This is something that I'm looking at getting into in the near future, but what accessibility formatting is all about is making it readable for our low vision or our dyslexic knitters and crocheters out there. And it requires very special formatting. And if they're low vision, it, they might need a screen reader. And how does the screen reader read the abbreviations and those sorts of things. They, they can't. So there's lots of little things that we look at to make sure that your pattern reaches the largest audience possible. Some editors do chart rendering. So we take your written instructions, we turn it into a chart. Again, this is something I'm learning to do so that possibly I can help you with that in the future. I started out basically trying to create my own charts. I realized very quickly I had a great deal to learn, and thankfully I have a very good tech editor of my own. And so some editors offer that as a service. Look at their services and see what they provide and make sure that the things that you need, you can get all under one roof. If you need schematics and you don't want to have to draw them for yourself, it might be a good idea if the editor you use can do that for you. They're checking all your numbers anyway, so why not have them add those numbers to the drawing or, and to create the drawing that can be added into your pattern so knitters can see the image of what your sweater should look like or your garment or your cowl or whatever it is so that they know this is going to fit the size that they need. If you need grading, I will say this is the one place that I highly recommend you have more than one editor. In my case, I work with an editor. When I quote my estimate, I include a little bit to offset the cost that I'm going to pay her so that she can edit my numbers. But I also let you know up front that that's going to be done for you. So if your grader is not offering a second pair of eyes to look at those numbers, you might need to find a second editor to look at those numbers as well to make sure that they're accurate. None of us are perfect. Let me tell you, I make mistakes. I miss things. I don't plug in quite the right formula. And it's helpful to make sure that I've got someone that backs me up that says, did you really mean this? Are you sure this number is correct? Maybe it should look like this. And she does a great job. I also edit her grading jobs. So I hope she's letting her clients know up front when she takes a grading job that a second pair of eyes are going to look at these numbers and they will be as accurate as possible. But if you need more than one service, look at the tech editor's website. Make sure that they offer the services you, you want and that they are considering all of the possible things that you might need. Now, where do tech editors learn? There's a lot of editors out there. 
that have learned simply by writing lots of patterns. They started in the design world. They have done their own writing, their own grading, their own schematics, their own charts. And in the process, they learned a lot about what needs to be done. Now, those designers don't tech edit their own work, or at least they shouldn't, because none of us see the mistakes that we make ourselves. They are fully capable of being really fantastic editors. So if they haven't had, quote unquote, education, that doesn't mean they're a bad editor. But there are places that we go that we can actually get training. I personally used the Knitting Guild Association, TKGA, and that's where I got my training. TKGA focuses on magazine style editing. And the types of things I learned, I don't necessarily apply everything to what I do on a day-to-day basis with independent designers. I don't need to worry about the length of the pattern. As an independent designer, you're probably producing your designs via PDF. And we don't have to be as cautious about space when we do that. We can include things in our patterns that magazines simply don't have the room for. So it's a little bit of a different story. If you are submitting your designs to a magazine, they generally have a tech editor on staff. If they don't, they will tell you, and you can have your pattern edited separately. But they usually do, and they are trained to edit to meet the format of the magazine. Sometimes that means removing things from your pattern that you would rather not have removed, and sometimes that means making lines a little more brief than you would prefer, but it's all a matter of space. I'm so sorry. My throat seems to be getting a little dry. But the TKGA focuses on magazine style editing. And as I said, that's a little bit different than what I end up doing on a day-to-day basis, but it's still a decent course. It's difficult And many people never finish because of the difficulty, but it is there. Next is the Tech Editor Hub. Now, the Tech Editor Hub has courses for both knit and crochet editing. At some point, I may consider going back and doing the crochet editor course. I had planned on doing something along those lines last year, but, well... A, I wasn't as confident in crochet. You've heard me talk about that time and time again. And you'll hear me talk about it in the future. I am a crocheter, but I've never crocheted a garment. And I'm not sure I'm the best person for the job all the time. I have done crochet editing. I probably will continue to do some here or there. But I will be very upfront and say, If this is a garment, there are really good crochet tech editors out there. And as you know, I fully back Tiffany Wooten at wootcrafts.com. She is fabulous. She knows her stuff. Uh, She's great to work with. She's fun to work with, so don't hesitate. And of course, B, my year kind of fell apart with the medical issues that while still exists to a degree, I've overcome to the point where I'm back to work. So as I said, the Tech Editor Hub does offer classes in both knit and crochet editing. They also offer grading classes that are both for tech editors and designers. So if you're interested in doing your own grading, or you are interested in doing tech editing, and you want to think about the grading aspect of it. It's a great course. They run live sessions, so you have to be aware of when the sign-up is, and the easiest way to do that is to join their newsletter 
Then they announce what class is coming up that's going to be opened, when it's going to be opened for registration, and you can get in on the class you want. A third possibility, and I know very little about this one because I've not actually participated in any of her classes, is a woman uh, with a business called Cool Wool Designs. I will have a link to her website. She does both knit and crochet. I have seen her on Instagram. We have chatted back and forth a little bit, not a whole lot. Um, so again, I, ha I have no idea how good her class is, but it is there. So again, tech editors do different things. Make sure you check it out the tech editor you're considering. Make sure you email the tech editor you're considering and get a feel for how they handle their communications. Do they respond quickly? Do they respond completely? Do they really answer your questions? That's an important part of the job. Um, communications is huge. If uh, your tech editor can't communicate with you in an email, they're unlikely to be able to communicate well in their comments on your patterns or your handouts or whatever it is you're looking to get edited. So make sure you reach out, make sure you have a conversation with the person before you choose them, make sure it's a good fit, and don't hesitate to move on if even after the first or fifth or tenth pattern, you realize, hey, you know, this relationship just isn't working and find someone new. I'm more than happy to uh, pass on my clients to someone else if we're not gelling because different personalities, people, let's face it, we're all unique and we don't all work well with everybody. Some things I some things I do, some things I do in a specific way may not work for your working style. So that's all well and good. I get it. I also am more than happy to take emails on a regular basis with just questions. Ask me anything. Ask me for things that you want to know personally. Ask me for things you would like to hear in the podcast. You know, coming up with ideas is going to be much more of a challenge now that I'm by myself. And you're going to find that I repeat myself, which I've done here. <laughs> and I'm probably going to be a little briefer without someone sitting there to bounce things off of. I may not think of everything the way I might if I were with my partners, who I miss deeply. But I'm here I'm still here for you. I'm still here for myself. And I hope you have a great day. Happy crafting. And we'll see you next time. Join us again for episode 24, when you will get to meet Nikki Jensen, tech editor and designer from Canada. Don't forget to like and subscribe wherever you listen and join the conversation in our Ravelry or Facebook groups. For show notes or knit tech editing and related services, please visit my website at arcticedits.com.